Monster Hunter games prior to World had quite the different skill and armor system. Some of you coming from World might be a little overwhelmed, or maybe you're just looking for a better understanding of it. In this video, I'm going to go over how the system works, as well as how to create an armor set yourself that you're proud of, and what tools you can use to assist you. The first thing you need to understand is that skills will only trigger once you hit 10 points. Anything less means nothing. Also, any further investment into skills beyond 10 doesn't necessarily mean you're getting any more out of it. Some skills will trigger a second level at 15 points, and only a few get a third level at 20 points. If you're unsure, just look at the skill info to see how many levels there are. Secondly, you need to know that there are negative skills as well. It's pretty easy to avoid these if you're using a mix set, but just be aware that anything with negative 10 points will trigger a detrimental effect. Let's take a look at the components to a single piece of armor. Each armor piece has a number of points that contribute to a skill, whether they are positive or negative points. These are what you're trying to get to 10 or higher points, and keep away from negative 10 or lower points. They also have a certain number of slots. These slots are incredibly important, and it's a common misconception that the higher the points, the better the piece, as sometimes a lower point piece with more slots can be more beneficial for mixed sets. Also, be aware that armor has resistance values, and creating mixed sets can either improve your elemental resistance or alter it for better or worse. These slots are important because they are what allows for the flexibility within a mixed set. Most skills have decorations you can make that you can insert into these slots to give points, both positive and negative, to a skill. Skills fall into four different categories, the first being the easiest to fit into an armor, called five socket skills. These are skills where the decorations add two points to their skill, with no negative skill points being added. You only need a measly five sockets to bring this skill up to ten points, and some of these can be really useful, such as speed sharpening. The next category of skills are single double socket skills. These are skills where you can only add a single point into a single socket, or if you have a piece with two sockets in it, you can add three points to the skill. You have to be careful with these as they will take away points from another skill. An example of this is the eating skill. The eating decoration adds one point to fast eating, but also takes away a single point from recovery level, which makes your potions heal you for more. Since these skills are closer related in practice, it makes sense that the decorations work against one another. These skills take a minimum of 7 sockets to add completely into an armor set, and of course that means you need armor pieces with 2 sockets within the same piece to add these decorations to. The third category is single triple socket skills. These are typically very powerful or useful skills, and they can be very difficult to fit into a mix set. Like the single double socket skills, you can add a single point to these skills in a single socket, but to get more bang for your buck, you will actually need an armor piece with three sockets next to each other for the upgraded decorations. These decorations take three sockets to fill and give you four points into a skill, but will take away two points from another skill. You're going to need eight sockets minimum, two triple sockets being on the same armor piece, to activate these skills. The final category are the most flexible the Single Double Triple Socket Skills, or SDTs as I like to refer to them. These skills, like Expert or Attack, can utilize single, double, or triple socket armor pieces, meaning you can add one, three, or five points into a skill. These skills are some of the only ones that go up to 20 points, or three levels to the skill. An example of this is Attack Up Small at 10 points, Attack Up Medium at 15, and Attack Up Large at 20. At minimum, you're going to need two triple sockets to get to 10 points, but that's only the first level of these skills, so consider adding more. Now it's great knowing what skills you can fit into a set when you have open slots, but it doesn't really help you when you're trying to make a mixed set. One of the key players in a mixed set is your talisman. These are random drops that offer points to skills, as well as slots that are the base for a lot of mixed sets. That is, it's difficult to make a mixed set if you don't have a talisman in mind. You can get talismans a number of different ways from mining, quest rewards, or using the melding system in your home. At first you want to keep every talisman you get, until you get more familiar with the skills and how many points it takes to activate all of them. Once you have a grasp for this, you can start discarding some talismans into the melder to get new ones out. Any 5 socket skill talismans should have close to, if not at 10 points, with some slots to be worthwhile. Or they can be paired with another skill to add further benefit. Single double skills are really nice to have paired with one another skills, and single triple skills should have a ton of slots if you can find one. The general rule is the more slots and the higher the points, the better. 
Finally, you're going to want access to all the R series armors. These are unlocked by doing a quest line once you hit HR6 in the Hunter's Hub. You'll need to do the villager request, Lil Miss Forge 1, then hunt any two hyper monsters you unlock in HR6, then complete Lil Miss Forge 2. Complete this and the request Hearth Chief, which will unlock the HR6 quest Triple Toady Terror. Once you clear this quest, you can unlock both the high and G rank versions of R armor by fighting the hyper monster variant. The R armor series have a wider distribution of skills and more slots, making them perfect for custom armor set creation. Now that we have a basic understanding of mix sets and what we need to make them, let's go through how to put one together that fits your needs. There are a few tools out there that you can use such as Athena's Armor Set Search or a few mobile apps, but I find they tend to miss a few things and not take into account the difficulty in making certain pieces. I prefer to make sets like we used to back in Freedom Unite, by hand. The very first thing you absolutely have to do is decide on what skills you want. It sounds pretty silly, but you can't make a mix set if you don't have a few goals. Allow these to be flexible as well as you may not have the proper talisman or it may just be impossible that the skill combinations you want. The second step is to decide on the talisman you want to use. Go through your list and find something that seems decent, but don't commit yourself to it entirely, as you may find that a different talisman works well for your set once you get started. Let's go through one of the sets I've made so you can get an idea of the thought process I use when making a mix set. I wanted a dual blade set that I could use with sleep status duels, so I was looking for status boosting skills as well as the 5 socket skill Bomber so my bombs would do more damage once I introduced the monster to Mr. Sandman. I realized I had a pretty solid talisman that has crit status 4, sharpness 7, with 3 sockets. The sharpness is really beneficial since sleep duels don't benefit from sharpness plus 1 or plus 2. That is, they don't go up in sharpness levels, so just extending the current sharpness level would suffice. Crit status is a great skill, but you also need some expert or other critical boosting skills with it, otherwise it's useless. So all of a sudden, I knew I needed to increase my sharpness to 10, crit status to 10, and find some form of expert. I also knew I wanted to increase my status even more using the status attack plus 2 skill. Using a rather handy spreadsheet that my friend made, I was able to search the different armors for armor pieces that had some of these components. Immediately, I found that Dark Metal Boots give status plus 9. Status Attack is a single double skill, which means this one armor piece is incredibly powerful for my set. I also found that the Grand Chaos Diadem, otherwise a Gunner Helm, gives Status Attack 6 with 2 sockets. These two pieces take care of my status requirement and also give me a number of sockets to play with. It's very important to remember that Gunner and Blade Master Helms can be worn by any class, as often, the Gunner Helm gives more skill points at the cost of defense. Now, I know that crit status is a single double skill, meaning I need two armor pieces with double sockets to allow me to put a plus three crit status decoration in each, bringing my talisman and decoration totals up to ten to trigger the skill. I have one with the helm, so I need to now look at pieces that have another. I also need to remember that the five socket skill I want needs, well, five sockets. This means the next pieces I choose have to have a minimum of two sockets each to fit the skills I want in. Therefore, I found an opted to go with pieces that have a lower skill point input with more sockets. I was able to find the Sanitar X had sharpness 2 and 3 expert with 2 sockets, which is perfect. I get my second double socket for crit status, and I can start working on expert to make the crit status actually work. Now I only have expert 3. I need at least 10 to trigger the skill, but ideally I like to have more than that since crit I1 only gives 10% affinity. So I look at the other pieces and find Jaggy X arms. Some of you will laugh, but this is actually a very good piece. It gives Expert 6 with 2 sockets. I also find Nargakuga X waist, which only gives Expert 3 but also has 3 sockets. A very good piece. All of a sudden, I'm up to Expert 12 with a ton of sockets. To get to Critical I-15, I only need 3 points. Thankfully, Expert is an SDT skill so I can use a plus 3 expert decoration to bump me up to 15. Then I add one sharpness plus one single socket decoration to get to plus 10 to trigger razor sharp, and I have just enough sockets to fit in my bomber. This set is great because not only was I able to fit all the skills I wanted, but with a triple socket weapon, I can actually use an expert plus five decoration to get even more critical eye. Also, if I don't want to use Bomber, I can sub it out for any other 5 socket skill, making it flexible for other status weapons as well. Let's look at one more example really quick. Sometimes you don't want to pair a set with a talisman, leaving it open to change to your needs. 
I like to call these template sets, because they work well as a base template for anyone since you don't need a specific talisman. In my mind, these are some of the best sets. I made one not long ago that was aimed at weapons that need more sharpness and can guard. Right off the bat, I knew I needed sharpness plus two. The best pieces in the game for this are Savage Devil Joe pieces, because they give insane amounts of handicraft with three sockets on every piece. Using that awesome spreadsheet, I also realized that the Crimson Fatalis XR Helm has Handicraft 6 with Element Attack 3, but no sockets. Nonetheless, this is a great piece and pairs really well with Isurian pieces. Now, I had a direction. I wanted Guard, but also could fit an Elemental Attack since my Helm had it. Sometimes sets work in this way. You find a good piece to use and realize the second skill it comes with would be a good pairing as well. The Lagia Cruz XR pieces fit both of these skills. Bringing in lots of guard, but also the perfect combination of elemental points, I was able to fit in 4 of 5 pieces into my set. The only thing left was a decision to either increase the handicraft with an armor piece, or put in another strong piece and use decorations to fit in the handicraft afterwards. With only 4 sockets in my set so far, I knew the answer was to use another Isurian piece to complete the handicraft while also giving more sockets for customization. The guard tops off at 12 points, which luckily is also a single double skill, so a 2 socket decoration gives us 3 points and brings us up to 15. And the rest of the set is entirely open to customize based on the talisman you have. I ended up using it for both lance and sword and shield with a different talisman. Hopefully, this helps some of you out when looking at customizing your sets or making an entirely new set based on a talisman you have. For me, this is the endgame. I love making sets for any occasion, and I hope you all will too. If you have any questions or need help with the set, feel free to drop a comment below or look me up on one of the social media platforms as well. Until next time, happy hunting.